This video goes over the critical thinking questions for The Vision of Maya Ying Lin from Mrs. Cecilia's 8th grade English class. While we're going over these questions, it would be helpful for you to have out your metacognitive reading log. This is Unit 3, Reading Log Number 2, Vision of Maya Ying Lin. And if you scroll down to the bottom of your reading log, you'll see the critical thinking questions. Let's go through them one by one and compare your answers. Your answer doesn't need to be exactly the same, but it should be in the same uh, ballpark. And sometimes there's multiple right answers, so don't feel bad if yours is different, uh, as long as it's uh, you know accurate and based on the text, you're in good shape. So why do people think that a Vietnam memorial was necessary? Uh, to recognize those who had died in the Vietnam War. Uh, that's the main purpose of the wall. You also may have put something along the lines of it was important to help the nation heal uh, or bring uh, the divided nation back together. Those answers would be okay as well. Okay. All right, next question. What kind of balances did the design need to strike in order to accomplish this purpose? Uh, it needed to honor the dead, uh, but also avoid prolonging political divisions. And you may think, how's a memorial going to affect political divisions? But uh, people were pretty pretty fired up on both sides about this conflict. So um, anything that looked like it was favoring one position or the other would have made somebody mad. So it was a, it was a delicate balance. All right. Why did Maya Lin enter the design competition to begin with? Uh, because her professor encouraged her to. She was in college. The professor uh, assigned... Uh, designing the memorial as a assignment in, in class, and hers was so good that uh, he encouraged her to submit it. Why was her winning so surprising? Uh, because this was the big competition. There was a lot of professional uh, you know, architects and designers that were entering in, so it was a big surprise that a student would win. No one expected a student to win. All right, if we scroll down to the evaluate section here. Uh, why should a memorial work be harmonious with its surroundings? This was one of the criteria for the design of the wall. And this is kind of an opinion question, so answers will vary. But a possible answer is that um, a memorial should be a place where people can go to reflect and remember. And if the memorial is not designed to be harmonious with its surroundings, then that could detract or take away from that purpose. People might think more about the design than they do about why they're there and you know that that's the purpose of it so you don't want it to you know making a statement's cool but you don't want it to stand out so much that it's you know taking away from the purpose of the memorial which is remembering you know the people or events or whatever um so you may have had a different answer and that's okay uh, as long as it you know accurately reflects your understanding of the word harmonious Next question, how does that, uh, the idea that Lynn's design was the best one connect to the idea that the design had to soothe passions, not stir them? So it goes back to that comment, soothe passions, not stir them. Don't divide people, uh, bring them together. And uh, again, this could uh, vary. This is definitely going to be a, a little bit of subjectivity in your answer. Uh, but my answer was that Lynn's design did not make a political statement. That's the number one thing. It wasn't divisive. Um, it didn't glorify warfare. It didn't. It didn't say, "Yay, I'm glad we, you know, fought this war." But it didn't criticize it either. It didn't say this war was a terrible idea. Um, it it didn't make a statement about the war. It just made a statement about the veterans and the sacrifice that they made. So it was very simple, and that simplicity, and obviously the inclusion of all the names of those killed, could be appreciated by those who opposed the war and the people who supported it. Um, it wasn't. It didn't take sides. You know, it only took the side of the veterans themselves. Next question. In the reading, the jury gives a statement about their selection. It, uh, meaning the memorial, is uniquely horizontal, entering the earth rather than piercing the sky. What is the connotative meaning of this description of her design? Uh, the connotative meaning is that the memorial is about the fallen soldiers who symbolically can be laid to rest in the ground. So the the wall is built kind of into a hillside almost, and um, you know it's it's emblematic or connotative of burial, which is what we do with with uh, many of our our dead. 
rather than piercing the sky, an example of a piercing monument, piercing the sky would be the Washington Monument, which is in the shape of an obelisk. Um, it's a, you know, it's it looks like a almost like a pencil, you know, point into the sky. And so, you know, piercing gives this connotation of aggression, of attacking, of of like a knife or a sword kind of thing. Um, and hers was the opposite of that. It, it, it wasn't aggressive. So the connotation is peaceful, is restful. And that's, uh, you know, seems appropriate for the purposes of this memorial. Right, next question. How's the description? They are also living gardens support Europe's view of cemeteries. And, uh... The idea being that cemeteries aren't just for the dead, but also places to be enjoyed by the living. Um, you know, the best way you can honor people who have died, you know, in, in the idea of some in Europe, is to uh, enjoy that space, to have that space be enjoyed by the living, and that can can honor the dead. Um, you'll often hear even cemeteries around here called memorial gardens. You know, they're meant to be almost like parks, uh, they tend to not be that way. We tend to think of them, you know, kind of like old horror movies, scary places. Um, but that's not necessarily the original intent uh, or design. Uh, and then the last question asks you to uh, create a chart listing the criteria p from page 507. And uh, in the second column, explain whether you think the memorial meets these criteria. Um, here are the criteria right here. Um, let me zoom in a little bit. Uh, these bullet points, essentially. So you could break them up a little bit. I actually came up with six. Uh, I cut a few of them up. Um, but here are those criteria. Uh, no political statements. A list of all the names of those killed or missing. Harmony with the site. Um, honor the memory of veterans. High artistic merit and continuity with the history of American national art. And durability, buildable, and easy to maintain. And so the short answer is, yes, it meets all those criteria. Uh, but how does it meet those criteria? Your answers may be longer than this. Uh, mine are pretty short uh, and to the point. But um, it doesn't, the wall does not make a political statement, uh, number one. It's, you know, just about the soldiers. Uh, number two, uh, it does list all the names. So that one, it obviously meets that criteria. Number three, according to the judges, it praised, uh, the judges praised the harmony of the design and, and, how well it fit in with the setting in, in the National Mall, um, you know, between the, all the other monuments and memorials that were already there. Um, it does honor the memory of veterans um, just by listing those who had died, um, but also even those who hadn't died, it was a place for them to go and remember, you know, their service and their fallen comrades and things like that. So, um, you know, it, it doesn't criticize veterans, you know, it, it honors them instead. Uh, number five, high artistic merit and continuity with history. The judges said that, yes, it did have high artistic merit and harmony with nearby national art. And uh, number six, durable, buildable, and easy to maintain. Um, it's made of stone. You know, it's polished stone with the, the names engraved on it. Um, and it's kind of built into the hillside, so it's not like it could ever topple over. Um, you know, it's not like a statue that stands up that, that could be toppled over. So uh, it is durable and uh, easy to maintain, you know, pretty much rinse it off, essentially. So um, it does meet all those criteria, essentially. So uh, hopefully you were able to check all your answers on uh, this assignment. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me during class or leave uh, some comments, uh, questions in the comment section on this video.